The Booth by Stephen Olson. Cast, Kermit McGinnis, mid-60s, widower, dressed in overall gardening clothes. Abel Trailsman, early 40s, widower, neighbor to Kermit. Roger Wayfarer, early 40s, recent widower, boyhood friend of Abel. Kathy Wayfarer, Roger's wife. Emily McGinnis, Kermit's wife. Kermit, an elderly man, stands in a garden with a hoe. Behind him is an old red phone booth, which is partially grown over by vines. Two men, Abel and Roger, approach Kermit. Kermit stops hoeing and stands, leaning his weight on the handle of the hoe. Abel approaches Kermit. Roger stops and hangs back. Morning, Kermit. Hey to you, Abel. How are you doing? I'm oh, fine, Kermit. How are you? Any day I'm in the garden is a good day. Looks like you're going to have a, another good season. Uh, yep. It's going well so far. Hey, who's your friend? This is Roger. Roger Wafer. He's a good friend. I wanted him to meet you. Uh, well, get him in handshaking distance. Sure, sure. Kermit, this is Roger. Nice to meet you. Abel speaks highly of your garden. Uh, how so? Uh, well, he says you got a green thumb and can grow just about anything. Uh-huh. Was that all? Oh, well, I, um... Well, I might have mentioned the phone booth. I figured you would. I hope it's okay, Kermit. I mean, I thought Roger might try it out. Uh-huh. Don't look like he's up to it. Well, he might be a little reluctant, but then, you know, I wasn't so sure about it either, at first. Uh, yep, I recollect that. Uh, how do you feel about it now? Well, like I was telling Roger, I don't know why or how, but I always feel better after I step out of that old booth. Is that it, young fella? You need to feel better? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure. It seemed a little crazy what Abel has been telling me, but he insisted I see it. <laughs> well, you've seen it. Yes. If it's all right with you, Kermit, I think it might help him deal with, well, his loss. You lose something, young man. No, no, not really. Look, Abel, maybe we shouldn't bother your friend. May maybe we should. Uh, Kermit, his wife died about, his wife died a month ago. I think he could really use the booth. I could help me. <laughs> Look here, trailsman. This ain't no ride at Disneyland. You. No, I put that booth here for me. I only let you in because we neighbors, and I was real sorry when your wife and little girl weren't around no more. I know, Kermit, and I appreciate what you did for me. It may have saved my life, but Roger has been my best friend since we were kids, and I know this will be good for him. I just don't want you spreading this around more than this. I don't want a bunch of grievers stomping over my vegetables. I understand. Roger is the only person I've told. It's just that he really needs this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have told him about the booth. So what about a young man? You need this? No, no. this was Abel's idea. I don't even believe it's real. Well, can't you see it? Yes, I can see it. <laughs> well, ain't seeing, believing? I, there it be as plain as the disbelief on your face. Yes, I see it, but it's just an old phone booth. That's all it is. <laughs> Sometimes what something is ain't what it is until you want it to be what it is. 
Yes, but there aren't even any wires going to it. No phone lines. <laughs> well, hell, there ain't enough line in the world to stretch fur enough to uh, conversate with them we really need to talk to. Roger, don't try to put too much logic into it. Just put yourself into it. Just try it. And you did this? Yes. You conversa had a conversation with Leanne? I talked. I felt better after I talked. I know there was no one on the other end, but I... <laughs> Possibly. Now, wait a minute. You're saying you can talk to someone in there? No, of course not. There's... <laughs> it depends on how much you want it. Yes, but it's just saying what you didn't get a chance to say. You're not really talking. It depends on how much you want it. I don't get it. <laughs> Look, my Emily and I used to garden all of the time out here. It was one of our greatest pleasures together. And when I'm out here, I, I think about her. I, it, it, it gets to a point when I want to talk to her, so I put the booth out here. It, it gives me a place for me to talk things out. But you could just talk to yourself. You don't need a booth for that. Oh, I tried that at first, but it felt foolish. Uh, just talking out in space by myself? And standing in a phone booth, out in the middle of a garden, that doesn't feel foolish? Yep. I, I know it sounds crazy, but somehow being on the phone feels like there is a connection. Just try it. I thought it was a little crazy, too. But everything seems to change once you're in the booth. <gasps> It may not work for you. It, it may not be what you need, but like I said, it all depends on how much you want it. Just try it. You have nothing to lose. Just my dignity. The dead don't place much value in pride. Death has a way of leveling everything out. Come on, Roger. It'll only be a moment of your time. Use it, get things off your chest. Abel walks over to the booth and pushes the door open. Roger walks up to the booth and steps inside. Now what? Just pick up the receiver and start talking. Don't I have to dial a number? It's not necessary, but I always used our old number. Roger picks up the receiver and dials a number. He waits a few seconds, then looks out at Abel. N now what? I, I don't know what to say. Start with a hello. Say hello to whoever you be calling. Ain't you ever used a phone before? Hello. Hello, Kathy. It's Roger. Kathy, I, I wish you could hear me. I, I wish I could talk to you again. I miss you more than I ever thought I could miss anyone. Abel talked me into this. He, he said he did it when he lost Leanne and Gabby. He said it helped him. I see that it did and was hoping it would help me. But I don't know, uh, maybe it's too soon. I don't want to accept you were gone. It's been hard for me. There have been moments when I didn't think I could. I'm okay. I'm getting better. Kathy, I just would like to hear your voice one more time. I want you to know how much you still mean to me. I had so much I should have said. I, I wanted to say, but now, now, I don't know what to say. I guess I want to say goodbye. Bye, Kathy. I love you. Goodbye, Roger. What? Kathy? Kathy?
Kathy, is that you, Kathy? Roger slowly exits the phone booth. How did it go? I think I heard her. Heard her? her heard who? Kathy. I think she said goodbye. I don't think that is possible. Kathy is gone. I know Kathy is gone. That's why you brought me here, wasn't it? To talk to Kathy, like you and Leanne. I come here to unload. I never actually spoke to Leanne. I never expected to speak to her. Well, neither did I, but I heard her. I heard her say goodbye. Maybe I was wrong. It's too soon. Look, let's go get a drink. We can talk about it. What about you, Kermit? Have you heard Emily? That is what the heart wants. But have you talked to her, had a conversation in the booth? It all depends on how much you want it. Well, okay, Kermit. Thanks for letting us use your... Thanks for letting us into your garden. We'll see you soon. Anytime, anytime you need the booth, you come back. Thank you. Abel and Roger walk out of the garden. There is a ringing from the booth. Kermit walks to it, leans the hoe against it, and enters, picking up the receiver. Hello. Hello, Kermit. Emily, how are you feeling? About the same. I miss you. I miss you too. How's the garden going this year? Uh, doing well. Doing well. I got the lettuce in early. Are you managing the weeds? Weeds? You know, I don't grow weeds. I don't grow anything you can't eat. What about that year we had all those dandelions in the garden? And now, I told you that was deliberate. Dandelion root is medicinal. Supposed to cure cancer. Didn't help, though, did it? No. <laughs> no, it didn't. But I had to try. Yes, you did. I am sorry I didn't make it. Not your fault, Emily. Not your fault. It is so very nice to hear your voice again. Nice to hear you, too. Take care of the garden. Cut me some rosemary and hang it in the booth. <laughs> sure. Sure, I'll, I'll do that first thing in the morning. Thanks, Kermit. Sleep well. I love you. Goodbye, Emily. I love you. Kermit hangs up the receiver and walks out to the garden. End of play. <laughs>